All right, picking up on problem 21 from the 2017 practice exam. We got the recent poll of 1,500 randomly selected eligible voters in a recent poll <laughs> out of 1,500 voters, only 525 or 35% of them said they did not vote in their last election. However, a vote count showed that 80% of eligible voters actually did not vote. Suspicious. So which of the following type of biases is most likely to have occurred in the poll? Well, you know, they're, they're lying. They're probably lying. That, that's what's going on. These, these people lied. Uh, um, that's, I mean, that's probably, you know, going to be the most likely because um, if, they were, if it was done randomly, then it's all good. It, it all checks out. But People can always lie, and when it comes, as you know, with surveys and all that. Um, so we're gonna have we're gonna go with response bias. Twenty two. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so here we have a distribution of scores. It's approximately normal with a mean of 78 and a standard deviation of 8.6. Which of the following equations can be used to find a score x above which 33% of the scores fall? Okay, so I guess they're just trying to confuse you and maybe test to see you really understand like um, z scores and, so, and, and such. So um, let's just draw, let me draw a visual so we can get what's going on. We have a standard normal curve and we want to find the value x where there's going to be 33% above or an area of 0.33. So like, this is basically a top 30%. Now, if this is a normal distribution with, with um, a mean of 78, standard deviation of 8.6, what would that X value be? So what you would do is you would transform the z-score, remember? Remember the z-score is equal to the observation value minus the mean over the standard deviation. Um, now, the thing is, is that they're, uh, they're giving you an equation. They want, so they want to see exactly that you can match it up correctly. So it's like the, this number here on the left is going to be your, your z your, your z value your standardized value. Um, so you want to find the value in, in general, not in, not, not, well, this is not going to be the X on the left, obviously. It's going to be essentially the, the standardized value, the Z-score, you know, where you have a mean of zero and standard deviation of one. What is that Z value where there's 0.33 to the, left, to the right? You can use, so you can use a, a table, like, you know, paper table, you know, like back in, you know, in ancient times when we didn't have calculators and all that, you can use this table and look it up, that's fine. Um, you can also use the function in your calculator, which is what I do, inverse norm. Um, well, that's not the right one, but let me go, that was, that was weird. Go to distribution and you're gonna go to inverse norm and you're gonna type the area that's going to be to the left. So I would type like 0.67. So 0.67 is there to the left or this whole area. And it gives it a Z score or a standardized value of point, about 0.44. So we're going to set 0.44 equal to X minus the mean 78 over the standard deviation of 8.6. So our answer will be C. Wait, what? Oh no, not C, <laughs> D. Yeah, not this one, yeah. It's not C, it's D because the 0.44. Whoops. Moving right along to problem 23. A random sample of 300 students is selected from a large group of students who use a computer-equipped classroom on a regular basis. 
Occasionally, students leave their use USB drive in a computer. Of the 300 students, 180 say they write their name on the USB drive. Which of the following is a 98% confidence interval for the portion of students who write their name on the U on their USB drive? Um, this is kind of a weird situation, but okay. Um, so the 98% comments interval for the portion of all students using the classroom who write their name on the USB drive. So 180 of them said they write their name. So 180 out of the 300 is the proportion. That's gonna be like a 0.6, right? Yeah, 0.6. That's your um, point estimate or your P hat. So you're gonna start with 0.6. And from there, you're going to add and subtract. Remember, your, your critical value is E star times your standard deviation of this. Um, this is where you're going to use the P the, or the, the proportion, sample proportion, times 1 minus P hat, like this whole thing over N. So you really just have to figure out the, the correct Z star. Um, because the p hat is already given to you, so this will be, let me put that there, 0. 0.6 times 0. 0.4 over what, 300? Yeah, over 300. And then the z star, um, going back to this table, remember the z star is the value where there's going to be 99% cell left. Because it's going to be centered, so it's 98%, like it's centered around, so there's 98% from left to right. But that means, let me just draw it for you. That one. Like, in case you need a little clear clarity. Like 98%, we're looking at 98%, you know, centered. From here to here is 98% of the area. But the Z star value here, like what's going to be this Z value? It's going to be the Z value where 99% is to the left because that's, you know, that's how the table is, you know, set up because it only calculates the value all the way to the left. So you look for the Z value where there's 99% of the area to the left. But again, you can use your inverse norm function on the calculator, which is what I do. Type 0.99. And you get about 2.32, 2.33. 2.33 times that 0.6 plus 2.33. And it looks like our answer will be C. Nice. Twenty-four. In a large set of data that are approximately normally distributed, R is the value in the data set that has a z-score of negative one. S is the value of the first quartile, and T is the value of the 20th percentile. Which of the following is the correct order from least to greatest of the values of R, S, and T? OK, this one's you've got to know why, what these terms mean. So normally distributed, R is the value in the data set that has a z-score of negative one. So remember the z-score table or the standardized table is centered at zero here. So negative one is gonna be you know, somewhat to the left. Now, if you remember the 68, I probably should have made this that big, make it look, or if you guys remember, you should remember like the basic, breakdown the 68 or 68 percent is within one standard deviation 95 is within two standard deviations 95 percent and then 99.7 percent is within three so within one standard deviation 68 percent you know is from the negative side to the positive side or from negative one to positive one so that means 34% is, is over here. Or you can think of like, this is 34%. And that means there's 16% here. So this is where R is gonna be. R is gonna be 
at this point there. That's R. S is the value of the first quartile. First quartile, the first 25%, of course. So 25% is going to be, you know, more to the right here. Somewhere, let's just say over here, 25%. So left, that's where S is. And T is the 20%. The T is going to be in the middle. This 20 is between 16 and 25. So RTS. RTS. The answer will be B. Researcher constructed a 95% confidence interval for the mean number of alfalfa weevils. I don't know what that is. They some sort of plant on an alfalfa plant. Yeah, it's a plant. Strange plant. Then a field based on 80 randomly selected alfalfa plants, the researcher found an average of 2.5 alfalfa weevils per plant and computed the 95% confidence interval to be 1.5 to 3.5. Which of the following is the correct interpretation of the 95% confidence interval? Oh, well, all that alfalfa stuff just to confuse us, eh? We just really have to know what um, confidence intervals mean. So when you know what they mean, when you really understand them conceptually, you'll, you'll know which of these will be correct. So let's just read them through. Possibly 95% of the alfalfa tree sample will have an uh, Nope, 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 no way wrong. No. Well, I mean, not way wrong, but it's wrong. Um, well, let me just say it this way. Remember, the 95% comments interval means that we're, we're, we're pretty confident that this interval contains the true, the true mean number. How tall confident are we? Or how confident are we? We say 95%, meaning that if we were to do this like sampling statistical technique, 95% um, of the time we would get in, we would get confident intervals that actually did capture it. We don't know again, we don't know where what, what number it is, but we just know it's in these intervals 95% of the time. Approximately, well, approximately 95% of the time. So, approximately after the no, no, if we were taking samples of eight, this is, a, this is a tricky one, but it's not going to be that. Try to, they try to get you. Because again, we don't know. We don't know if that's a true average. That's just our estimate. Um, if we repeat taking, if we repeated, Repeatedly sample this field, taking samples of 80 plants and constructing 95% confidence intervals, then approximately 95% of those intervals would include the mean, the population mean number of alfalfa weevils on an alfalfa plant in this field. <laughs> yeah, so it's D. Yeah, this is kind of made probably the key, the key sentence. Approximately 95% of these intervals. Okay, I'm gonna take a break water break um so if leave comments if you have any questions or are confused about maybe i just did not do got good job explaining something i know i can talk fast and maybe i mumble and jumble but you know i'm kind of talking to a computer screen so i never know but yeah leave me comments for feedback is always helpful good or bad and um i'll see you guys in the next video i'm gonna do the remainder of this test just so keep an eye out See you guys later.